By this time, most of you already know that React 19 is right around the corner. And that is why in this video, I'll be covering one of its newer hooks called Use Action State, which enables us to write efficient and much less code when it comes to managing forms in React.js. And also, if you want me to make a complete tutorial series on React 19, do let me know in the comments down below. So I've opened VS Code over here and let's first of all talk about how we can install React 19. So I'll say npm create wheat at latest. It's gonna ask us the project name. I'm just gonna press dot and package name. I'll just say React 19 doesn't really matter. And over here you have to select React and JavaScript. Now this has given us a new React app over here, but notice this is React version 18. So we have to manually install React version 19 for both React and React DOM. Okay, first of all, let's just go on and install all of the dependencies over here. So I'll say npm install. All right, there we go. Now to install React 19, we have to say npm install React at beta and React DOM at beta. Now notice. When we install this, it's gonna install the beta version of React 19 because React 19 has not been fully released yet, right? So this is the release candidate of React 19. So there we go. We have updated our dependencies. And now let's quickly go on and run this app. So I'll say npm run dev. And first of all, I'll quickly go inside the SRC and remove all of the things we don't need like this assets folder, everything inside of app.css, everything inside of index.css and inside of app.jsx, I'll remove all of these things everything inside of over here in the return statement, I'll have a div, which will say subscribe to roadside coder, which you should if you haven't yet. Let's remove this state as well. And now if I click on it, there we go. Our app is running smoothly. Now, traditionally, how did we manage our forms in react? We had to create separate states for all of the input fields for loading for error. And like it was a headache, right? Let me show you. Let me give you an example right here. So something like this. So basically we have a form over here with the username and password field. So let me show you something like this, right? So what we've done over here, we have created two separate state for username and password. And we are changing our states right over here. We have provided the value. Basically this is a controlled input, right? And when we submit the form by pressing this button submit, it will trigger this handle submit function. And first of all, it will do, you know, loading to set user null, set error null, then it will do the API call. And then in the end, it will set the error to the error and, you know, loading to false basically, or it, in this case is spending to the false, right? So there's just so many states. Let's just see this in action. So I'll say user and password login. You can see we have login and user has been logged in. And also, by the way, this is a dummy API that I've written over here, which simply if the ID password is user and pass, it will return us with some dummy data, right? Just simple dummy API that I've made over here. Okay. But if it's not the user and pass, it will give us the error. So let me show you just like this. So is there a better way of writing this code? Now before react 19 as well, we have something called form actions in react. There is actually a much better way of doing this instead of managing these username and password right over here. So let me just delete these states. And I'll remove these from over here as well. And from over here as well, our code has already started to look much better. Okay. Now, instead of this on submit, I'll say action over here and you'll notice how easy this makes our lives, right? So if you go inside of handle submit earlier, when we used to use something called as form data, right? So what we needed to do, we needed to add inside of, let's say for our username, we needed to do name equals username. And for password, we needed to do name equals password, right? That's fine. And when we did on submit handle submit, it would take this event and it would create like new form data and it will take out the form data from that. Right? So now all of that step has been skipped, right? Notice. So instead of taking this E event over here and doing E dot prevent default, we can just get rid of this E dot prevent default. We can directly take the form data by doing something like, so const username equals form data dot get and inside this we can write this username also same for password so i'll say password over here and now this will continue to work just fine and we didn't have to you know manage separate states for our inputs let's let's see let's check it out if i say user and pass press enter yep it works fine 
if I say user and whatever login it will say invalid credentials okay and notice it has reset the input form for us as well right but now we will take this one step forward by using use action state and making our code much more efficient but before that uh, i would like to address one thing like a lot of you people message me to ask like what's the best resource for learning react or you know front end in general so let me show you what i generally prefer when i have to learn something new in front end right so yeah, this is the resource that I refer to and you can see they have a free course on what's new in React 19 as well and they have a bunch of free courses over here. This website is called Scrimba and I actually reached out to these guys to collaborate for this video and they were kind enough to give a 10% off for you guys. But if you don't want to you know, go for their pro plan, that's fine because they already have so much free content on their website. And the best part about Scrimba is their interactive video tutorials. Like if I show you, so you can see over here that instructor is teaching about form actions over here and you can see we have zoomed out of the video and gotten right inside of the code. So we don't ever have to leave our website like where we are studying and we can directly jump right into the code. We don't have to open VS code or whatever, right? So this is an amazing and you can see we have the live preview of what we are trying to build over here as well, right? And you guys already know how important it is to be an AI engineer these days. That's why I'm following currently there the AI engineer path right now. This is a pro course, but as I already mentioned, they have a bunch of free courses over here as well, which you can follow. So definitely I'll give you guys the link in the description down below. And this discount is only valid for next two weeks. So make sure you take the benefit of this offer right now if you're interested in Scrimba Pro. All right, so coming back to our video, let's see how we can use use action state over here to make our code more efficient so let's just get rid of all of these states right and i'll import use action state from react and we won't use use state at all right now so let's see how this use action state works i'll go to google and search use action state so this basically takes a callback and an initial value for our state and it returns us with our actual state the submit action which was currently this function that we made over here and an is pending as well right so that we don't have to manage the loading state separately so okay i'll say const and i'll take my state which we called as user right i'll take the submit action function you can call it anything and is pending right now inside of the handle submit we don't have to do is pending set user null set error all of these things and all of this stuff over here as well i'll get it off finally and this set user set error inside of this all of these things okay but we should not call this handle submit directly over here this function will be taken by this use action state so okay i'll provide this handle submit or let's just call it login right i'll just provide this login to use action state and the second thing it took was the initial state, right? So right now I have my user state, right? So I'll say data equals null by default. So user was null by default, right? So I'll put data over here. And for managing the errors, I'll say error by null as well. So our loading is already handled, right? But we need to handle our data capturing and error handling. So we'll do that inside of this state over here, okay? So now instead of calling this handle submit or this login function directly, we have to just call this submit action and it will handle everything behind the scenes. So basically this use action state will take this login function and it will provide it with two things. First is the form data and, and actually form data is second thing. First is the previous state, whatever the previous state over here was, right? So how do you update this state? whatever you will return from this function right here will result in updation of that state. So let me show you if I am doing this, uh, you know, await login user with username and password, we will get the response, right? So in the console log, we will get the data. So response dot data. Let me show you if I go back. So this is giving error. So I'll just uh, comment this error tag for now. And also this login is an arrow function. Right? Let's just make it a normal function. So async function login so that this is hoisted and we can receive it over here so yeah like this just a normal function let's see now okay it's already showing us logged in because our user is uh, object right now right just ignore that for a moment i'll just say user and 
password let's just open our console and if i click on login we get our response right over here okay so we need to store this in the data so i'll say return data will be response dot data and right now there's no error so i'll say error is still null but in the catch i'll say return and error will be so how are we throwing the error let me have a look so inside of our api i'll reject it with this object right over here inside of this object we have this error okay so i'll say error will be error dot error and we also need the previous data as well over here right so what i'll do i'll take this previous state that i showed you we also get this over here i'll just i'll just spread this so that we get the data and the updated error right over here amazing this should work over here instead of user i'll say user dot data if this exists then i'll render user dot data dot email and for error i'll say if user dot error exists then i'll say user dot error this should do it what's wrong user is undefined let's just add a optional chaining over here yep that's fine okay so i'll say user and password press enter and there we go we are logged in if i press like I've enter something else something wrong it will show us invalid credentials and this should have been reset right so we can actually over here we can do data equals null if you want to reset that so it will just result in resetting okay so yeah this is the brand new use action state hook which will be introduced in react 19 and also i've covered a lot of such complex examples like creating config driven form and things that you you know only learn when you're an experienced developer and a lot of companies do tend to ask you in your interviews as well in my front end interview preparation course so click the link in the description down below and check out this course this is the only thing that you will ever need to prepare for your front end interviews and not only this i've covered every single topic of react js like react router dom redux all of the hooks class based component function based component react even the performance optimization which is asked from senior developers a lot tons of machine coding questions as well and obviously in-depth interview preparation course on javascript as well so all of this you get in one single course so click the link in the description down below because right now we're having the biggest sale of the year for a very limited time so don't forget to check it out or you can also scan this qr code on your screen to go directly to the course page and also as i mentioned if you want me to create a complete react 19 tutorial series let me know in the comments down below